Hey, welcome to another Live Wells Tech Training event. We are so happy you are here. Today we're going to be talking about IMRC, Intake right. Manifold Runner, Runner control. control. There you go. <laughs> okay, Intake Manifold Runner Control. But again, before we get started, yes, All right. let's talk about giving away the coveted Wells Tech t-shirt. And if you don't have one of these, I'm sure you want one. So if you do want one, you need to answer this question correctly and text it into us. And if you do, we'd be happy to send one out as Perfect. soon as possible. Okay, here's the question. Tech A says, a properly functioning IMRC, intake manifold runner control system, will increase engine power and responsiveness. True or false? Yeah. Technician A, technician B, that's always a true or false thing, right? Pretty much, true, yeah. True or, yeah, it's sneaky, it's two true or false. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, but if you get one wrong, the whole thing's wrong. That's yep. Right. Anyways, tech B says, a failed IMRC can reduce fuel economy. Who is correct? Tech A, B, both, or neither? Text in A, B, C, or D, and if you All get right. that correct, We'll bring up Michael's email address at the end. Yep. You send him an email with your shirt size and your mailing address, and he will send one out to you. Yeah. All right. Excellent. All right, so the vehicle we got in question today is an 04 Focus with a 2.3 engine in it. Right. And it's got codes P2004 and P2006. Now the 2004 right. means if that it's stuck open. It's stuck open. Right. Okay, and 2006 means? It's stuck closed. It's stuck closed, which is interesting, and you'll find out what we do with that. Each other. They do contradict each other. And, uh, but the codes would come up only after a, a, an extended drive. Right. And the complaint came in, you know, she had driven uh, a couple hours, yep. and all of a sudden, boom, check engine light came on, and she had a loss of power. Right, yeah, the car didn't feel like it was accelerating like it should. Yeah, it just felt real doggy, like you were all of a sudden pulling a trailer or something, right? right? yeah. Okay, all right. So, let me get to my notes here. <laughs> um, now, this vehicle has been in for repairs for this problem prior yeah, to this. The exact same codes. The exact same codes. And uh, we'll bring up the repair orders from that, right. okay? We're not going to tell you who did that, but you can see that within a four month period and about 3,000 miles, they did the exact same repair twice. Right. I have a problem with that. I right. got a problem with that. You know, yeah. I, I, it's obvious that this part and what they had replaced was the actuator. Right, yeah, the IMRC actuator. Right, yep. and they replaced it twice, the same part, and charged them twice fully for, for it. Uh, yeah, uh, did, why didn't, you know, if it was two different technicians working on it, first of all, you want to get a history of that vehicle. This right. is a regular customer, of course, right. and get a history of that vehicle and see what had been done prior. Exactly. Right? And if that actuator had been replaced, you would question that. Right, exactly. And, also, and if it was two different technicians, Okay, which uh, which I can see, it's, it's a big shop and all that. They got probably 10 stalls or more, something sure. like that. And uh, if it was a different technician, you know, isn't the first thing you're taught as a new technician to use your senses? Yeah, exactly. And, and one of them is sight, yep. right? And so when you look at that, can't you see that that is a new actuator on there or fairly new? Right, and that's I noticed that right when I popped the hood and was looking at it, I noticed that the part's brand new. You know, that's a red flag right away. Right away, I mean, okay, this part's been replaced. Yes, you know, it is a common failure mm -hmm. on these things. If you go out to Identifix, you can find that out that it sure. is a common failure. But that should be a red flag saying, okay, did they put in an inferior part? You know, did something happen to this part? Is there, or is there something else going yeah, on? Yeah, is here? that part really the root cause of the problem? Right, but just to replace it again, charge them and send them on their way, I got a problem with that. Well, and then it didn't even fix it. You know, it came into our garage. And, right. You know, now, now we got the problem so again. Third time. And you know, uh, granted, you know, it probably didn't show up when they took it to the shop because it sure. is a long drive. You know, it it's got to get that core. 
a temperature on the mm -hmm. engine up high enough before it actually shows up. Right. But I don't know. I, I have problems with that. Right. Anyways, and it was eight hundred and fifty dollars uh, a total for the repair. So it was like four hundred and twenty five bucks a time. Right. I don't know. To me, and that's to a not, lot of money. To not really fix anything. I mean, they, the car still acted the same. Right. And, it, well, you know, I don't know. Well, Anyways, so you know, that was the first thing that came up to us was, okay, you go out there and look on Identifix. Okay, this is a common failure. Right. You go look at it. The part looks brand new. Right, okay. exactly. So where we came in was, mm -hmm. let's get a history of what has been done. Yeah. And that's when we got the... Uh, the uh, the sheets for you know prior work exactly and that's when we found out it had been replaced twice right okay so in your diagnostic mm -hmm. procedure what was your next step after you noticed well, that the it had been replaced you know at that point I really wanted to figure out what the system does and how it functions on the car and and what exactly it's why the code is setting what sets the code um, you know I did the visual inspection. So at that point, then I went back to the computer and really did some research on the system. And really, the research actually led me to be more confused about this system. Yeah, and you know what you're talking about here is you wanted to find out exactly how the system functioned before right. you started digging in yeah. to get a good idea of what was going on. And right. I have no problem with guys in the shop charging for that time. Right. I mean, that's part of the diagnostics. Exactly. Right? Every okay. car is different. Every car is different. And sometimes it's it's... Uh, faster and more efficient to learn about the system before you go get your hands on it and start taking stuff apart. Especially when you can see that this one's been dug into before. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And by the way, the reason why a person like this, a technician like this, mm -hmm. really bothers me is because they give the whole industry a black eye. Sure. You know, it isn't just them. It just makes us all look like, you know, <clears throat> we're either out for the money or we just don't care. Right. Okay, and that's not true, as exactly. you know. Exactly. Okay. So upon my research here, I went out to one of our normal sources and went looking for service information on it, on the intake manifold runner control system, IMRC. That's what our code was setting, a stuck mm -hmm. open, stuck closed. Upon digging, I found that we have multiple different pieces to these, this intake manifold. The IMRC system is part of the intake manifold and its job is to change the lengths of the intake runners, the part that the air actually flows through to get into the engine. Yeah. Its job is to change the, the, the lengths of those runners to um, bring the engine's torque curve, bring the power curve more in line at low RPMs and high RPMs. It's kind of a, a dual stage intake. Right, it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, and you know, by changing the lengths, mm -hmm. you'll get different power uh, outputs, better outputs. Right. Better power outputs, I guess. I don't know exactly how to say that, but you know, it would change right. with the, the length of the runner. So that way, you can have one intake manifold on this engine with a long runner for low low RPM torque, and then uh, the runner gets shorter, air can flow faster through it for high engine RPM power. Right. When you need that air, right. it's available. Right. Exactly. So upon my research, I found that this uses two separate systems. It uses what's called an intake manifold runner control or um, IMRC, and then it also uses an IMSC, a swirl control. Swirl control, that's interesting. So what is swirl control? So I had to look into that next, you know, figure yeah. out what the heck's going on here. So swirl control is actually butterfly valves that are on the intake manifold, according to our service information here. Butterfly valve that blocks about 60% of the air that would enter into the cylinder head from the intake manifold. Mm -hmm. It's essentially kind of like a, a throttle plate right there. Right. It stops some of that air. It is. And, you know, for us old timers, <laughs> it's actually, that's how a carburetor works too. Okay. It works virtually the same way. Right. You know, it changes uh, the Venturi size. Right. So by changing that size and by, by restricting part of that air, it's causing the air that is entering into the cylinder head to tumble, to, to get a swirl effect to it. A, a swirl control valve creates that swirl effect in the air, and it allows the fuel in the air to mix up at a... It allows them to mix to atomize better so that the fuel can burn more efficiently and with more power, get a complete burn. Right, and so you got a slow movement of air, mm -hmm. and if you mix it up better, right. you're going to get less globs of fuel, right. so to speak. You know, it's going to be atomized, it can be broken apart into small pieces, right. so it can ignite easier. Exactly. But now if you have or this... more truly, I guess, because you know, sure. then you have a true burn 
uh, flame front. Yeah, okay, perfect. So if you are blocking off this air, say 60% of the air entering the cylinder, well, that's not gonna do very well for you for, high, for higher RPM. Right. So then they include an actuator, and this one uses a vacuum actuator to turn those flaps and open them up and create a, a free-flowing passage. And now the computer's all tuned for that, the fuel and air ratios are all right. set inside the computer for that. Mm -hmm. So if this thing recognizes a problem, it can set a code for this swirl control. And that's where this gets yeah. even more confusing. Mm -hmm. The swirl control actuator is the one that has the position sensor on it. And that's the one that can set your 2004 and your 2006 right. codes because it has a position sensor on it. The computer can check it. Yeah, see where it is, it's like a TPS. Right. Okay, where are you at? Right, so the code description says IMRC. The part on the vehicle says IMSC intake manifold <laughs> swirl control, and then we have what's called an IMTV, uh, intake manifold tuning valve. And again, more confusing service information. According to this, it's a motorized actuator mounted directly to the intake manifold. Yeah, I didn't see one of those on there. Our intake manifold had two vacuum actuators and right. two vacuum solenoids. Yeah. So the first line of our service information is inaccurate, but it's saying here that this tuning valve will open or close, depending on engine RPM, to allow the air to flow either through a longer runner or through a shorter runner. Right. Well, to me, that sounds like the definition of runner control right there. Yeah, and you know, it works the same. It's just that mm -hmm. they're steering in the wrong direction. You could be how long, looking how long for that uh, right. electronic uh, control. Exactly. And then it also says that the controller will not be energized below 2600 RPM and that our swirl control will be energized below uh, 3000 RPM. But when you go look okay. at the vehicle, and when I did the diagnostics, both of them were on at idle. Interesting. Uh, it, it had my head spinning, and it actually took getting the intake manifold off to be able to figure out what exactly what was going on. And that's exactly what we did, mm -hmm. is we, you know, we decided, we talked about it, and uh, it was time to pull that manifold off and see right. exactly what was going on in there. And what really led me to doing that, besides wanting to learn more about the intake and the IMRC or swirl control system was um, when I was doing a visual inspection, I opened up the throttle body and looked down inside and I could see that there was a lot of oil buildup, a lot of carbon buildup, and there was actually a, a small puddle I could see in the base of the intake manifold of oil and just looked like goop. That's a red flag. Exactly. We got something going on there, exactly. something not right. And right. Uh, it's like the doctor looking down your throat. Yeah. Right. It's something don't look right in there. Right. But anyways, uh, so, once you got to that point, mm -hmm. we did discuss and okay, let's pull that manifold off right. and see exactly what's going on. Right. And, and before we pulled the manifold though, you know, it was a good idea and we did check our vacuum solenoids. There's two vacuum yep, solenoids. That's true. And then those vacuum solenoids are a gateway to control the vacuum actuator. So right. vacuum applied, it controls the actuator, it opens or closes those valves. And they were functioning. They both worked fine. The right. actuators both held vacuum just fine. And we'll show you guys how to yeah. test those. Yeah, and granted, it wasn't after a two hour trip or anything like that. You right. know, that's pretty tough to uh, get into that uh, scenario. Right. You know, I'm not gonna have you drive an hour away and an hour back and exactly. all that kind of stuff. Exactly. And, and you wouldn't happen in the shop either. Right. But uh, it gave us a, a good uh, view as to what was going on inside mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So uh, very good, and we do have that manifold off. Right. And you did a cutaway on that. I too. did. Uh, let's just talk about the wiring real quick before we oh, get yes. over to the vehicle. Yes. Let's do uh, that. If we go ahead and pull up the diagram, you'll see right there in the center we have our intake manifold runner control solenoid, and our intake manifold tuning valve. So you have your IMRC, your IMTV. Um, it looks like they both share uh, on the same power wire, which also goes to the intake manifold runner control module. Right. Well, according to my information here, I don't see anything that says module on it, first of all. Right. Um, but then, if we go back to our valves in the center, you'll see that they're both grounded by the PCM to turn them on. Yep. Um, so now, I had to do some more looking and figuring out, reading through this service information, and found out what they're referring to as the intake manifold runner control module is actually that actuator that is on the side of the intake manifold, the part that was replaced twice already. Right. That's what they're calling the module because it has a position sensor inside of it, similar to a, a throttle position or yeah. a whatever. It's, it's like just a TPS a, or EGR position sure. sensor, you know, Ford yep. used that for quite a while. Yep. 
So that's what's actually mounted on the side of the intake manifold, and that one's replaceable. Mm -hmm. But now our intake manifold tuning valve, the one that um, cannot set a code, the one that has no verification if it's working or not, that one's actually not replaceable. That one you can only get with an intake manifold. Right, and it has no position sensor. It has no position sensor either. So, so. interesting. It's very interesting stuff. It is, and, and uh, you know the the part that's real interesting about this is, at one point it was stuck open, right, and at one point it was stuck closed. And by just looking at the service information, you don't, I, I couldn't defer which was which was accurate. What's correct? You know, we we go to sources like this for accurate information, and it's it's not. No, in unfortunately, it isn't always, and and so right. why you got to question it. You have to question everything. Right. If it doesn't look right, smell right. You need to question exactly. and find out what's going on. Exactly. So, And that's what we did, and that's what we're going to walk you guys through, I guess, when yeah, we get over to the intake. Yeah, take those along. All right, I'll bring and, my paperwork. Uh, I'm good, I think. Yeah. I'll bring my rag I think and so. uh, my water. <laughs> good. And let's go on over there right, and take a look at that. All right. All right. Yes, here we are with our 2004 Ford Focus. Right, yep, 2.3 liter. 2.3, the infamous 2.3. Yeah. And uh, it does have a new manifold on it, right. as you may be able to see. And the old manifold is right here. Yep. And you dissected it. Yeah, cut it all bit. apart. Cut yeah. it apart so we could see actually what's happening on the inside. Right, exactly. All right, pretty cool stuff. Um, right. Why don't you go through the diagnostics? Show them what sure, we did. yeah, before we get to you know the internals of everything we cut apart here, Let's diagnose it just like we did on the car. Okay. So I got a vacuum gauge here. We have our solenoid hooked up. We have two vacuum solenoids. Oop. Two vacuum solenoids right here. And those vacuum solenoids act as a gateway between the intake manifold vacuum and the two vacuum actuators. Right. Computer turns the solenoid on. Vacuum's able to flow through the solenoid down to either actuator, depending on which solenoid's turned on. Okay. So in their off position, so just like the key being off, you should be able to pump vacuum on that on the manifold side of it, and it should hold. Right, which it does. It's holding perfect, All and right. then if you go ahead and energize I it. I will activate it, and you can see it'll immediately drop right off. Right, and the reason why it drops off isn't because it's not holding vacuum, it's just because you have more volume of vacuum you have to draw on now. Right. So I'll go ahead and draw the vacuum on here, and you'll see right away we're actually getting our um, butterfly valve here to move. Okay. If you do that one more time, we'll shed a little light on that so everyone can see what's happening there. There we go. So right, it closes good. up and reopens. Okay. So now you can see that these things are opening and closing. This closed position is what it would be at at idle. Paper's blowing around here. Um, the computer commands this actuator, excuse me, this solenoid on at idle or under 3,000 RPM, sends vacuum to our actuator and closes our butterfly valves in here. And that right. changes the airflow inside the motor. So at that point, engine. you know, that would be like at idle. Exactly. Right? So at rest, these valves are open. Right. Right. So as soon as you start up the engine, you should activate these and close those flaps. Right. And at that point, you're using the long runner. Right. And the runner is the individual channel that the air can travel through to get into the cylinder. Each passage. Right. right. That's what they're talking about when they say runners. Right. So this is actually changing. It's controlling the runners. It's controlling the length of the runners. Right. And if we, you know, talking about airflow, let's just show how the air flows through this manifold. Um, if you could go ahead and bring up that close-up shot of the manifold here, you can see we have the back sides all cut away. And you can see there's four chambers inside the manifold, mm -hmm. and that splits to those four individual runners. Right. So our air is going to flow in through our throttle body, enter in, get into this large chamber, this large uh, air reservoir at the back. Yeah, it's a reservoir, actually. And then they get, it gets individually put through each, each uh, chamber into each cylinder. Right, and it's, what the air is going to do is mm -hmm. just like electricity. It's going to take the path of least resistance. Right. So wherever there is no resistance or low resistance, yep. that's what direction it's going to take. And then from there, it is going to flow around through these runners, and then if this is open, mm -hmm. it's going to allow it to travel through it faster. It's going to give it a shorter path. Like at higher RPMs. Like at higher RPMs. And if it's closed, like this, then it'll take the longer path and it'll give more torque at low RPMs. Right. So that's the way that works, and that's changing the intake manifold runner system. Um, Length, well, really. It's what's confusing about this is 
this is what's doing that, but that's not what the code is setting for. That is an interesting part. You, you know, know, when you look at that, and you get a P0204, right. which is either opened or closed, and, right. the, and the six is the opposite of that. Exactly. Right, so, but it's not talking about the actual runner controls. Right, this is the actuator for that, and that Ford is actually calling that the tuning valve or the tuning actuator. And it has no connector on there, no way the computer, computer can monitor that at all. It's actually monitoring this one. And this is the uh, swirl control actuator. Right, the swirl control. And that's, you were talking about resistance before, that's what this is doing. This butterfly valve right here is actually adding resistance to the air coming in. It's creating uh, a, a block for it and um, making the air swirl as it goes over it. Right, it's making uh, a, a smaller passage right. and the air can only pass through the top if you want to take a look at that. If yeah, you want to bring yeah. if we can bring up the close-up shot of them open first, you can see that they look like a normal intake manifold open. Air is able to flow freely through there, no restriction at all. And that would be when you're up above 2,000, 2,500 RPM. Exactly, yep. Yep, really, you want that air to flow through there fast. If you're at low RPM, the uh, solenoid will be energized. It'll mm -hmm. control the vacuum actuator, which will close these flaps. Right. And, and closed, if you can bring up that picture there of them closed, you can see you lose a lot of your airflow. Right, you do, and it's, what, 60 or 80%, I think exactly. they say it's 60%, but it looks, it looks more like 80. It does. Right, and uh, so the air is only coming through the top, and that's creating a turbulence or a mm -hmm. swirl. And when that happens, the, the fuel will atomize much better with the air. Right. Because it's moving at a high rate like that. And uh, so then because of that, you get a better flame front. You yep. get a more complete burn of that cylinder. Yep, and increases that power and, the, and increases fuel economy, really. Right. So that's, you know, that's going to be this actuator on this side. And that's going to be the swirl control actuator, which has a position sensor in it, like mm -hmm. we talked about, like a TPS. Um, but that's actually going to set codes, and the codes are going to read intake manifold runner control. So. And that's the tricky part. <laughs> that's where the weirdness steps exactly. in. Exactly. So you flag a code at 2004, 2006. They're actually referring to this actuator, that solenoid, the swirl actuator, the swirl solenoid, and the swirl flaps. Or the Not the one that also. the name says. Exactly. <laughs> so. And if, if, you know, if you're going out looking for this part, it's going to be considered an intake manifold runner control. Right. And they might even call it a module. On the wiring diagram, it's called the intake manifold runner control module. Right. Which, it's not a module adds, either. It adds more confusion to it. Right. And what actually, I think I got to the bottom of the confusion on this and why there's so many different things in the service information the SVT focus in this year actually uses a electronically controlled module. Right, that actually moves back and forth right. like that, yeah. So this one is doing it all with vacuum. Yeah, so whoever, well, I don't know who, <laughs> how they did it or whatever, but they, they may have put the only information or put the wrong information right. in, I don't know. Right. So let's talk about the failure on here. So this car, you know, I'd had a hot, a problem when it was hot, driving for quite a while, two hours. And that's the part of the complaint that you really have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. She had, to, she, her complaint was after driving two hours, right. she had a loss of power, right. trying to get out onto the highway, that type of thing. All of a right. sudden, somebody attached a trailer to the back. Yeah, and this poor little Focus didn't like that. No. <laughs> um, so what we think is actually happening is that these are actually sticking closed. Right. So like we talked about just before, at higher RPMs, you want air to flow freely into the motor, into the cylinder. Well, if these are stuck closed, you're starving the engine of air. Right. So your, your power loss is, is going to be great at that mm -hmm. point. Exactly. Your, your power, uh, available power is going to drop off greatly. You, right. you just shrunk it down to, you know, 40% or 20%, whatever exactly. it is, of what it could actually flow through. And just like you had mentioned before, like a stuck air, a plugged air filter, you know, it would yep. act just like that. And, you know, your mass airflow sensor on mm -hmm. here is going to say, all right, I got this much air coming in, you're going to get this much fuel. Exactly. That type of thing. These are calibrated specifically for that. So if right. these are stuck open at idle when right. they should be closed, that's going to also cause it to run poorly. Yes. Um, maybe a stumble, uh, poor fuel economy, that kind of thing. Even a hesitation, that right. type of thing. Right. So now we know that these things are having issues with them sticking, but we don't know if it's sticking that the solenoid's not working, the position sensor's not working, or the butterfly valve itself. 
But what we noticed is, and you saw in those close-up shots, there's a lot of buildup, a lot of gunk and stuff. There is up a lot there. of gunk in there. And everything else has tested out fine. So we know that that gunk, and especially with the temperature difference. Right, once you get that core temperature of the engine up high enough, it creates, turns this stuff into super glue. Exactly, and it actually will seal them up. And, and that, that explains why we had both codes, right. open and closed problems. Right. And what I found doing research is that other people have run into this where they're getting stuck codes, but then they're also getting it one step further where these are actually breaking. The, the flaps will actually break off. If you want to go ahead and bring that picture up, right. you can see that. And that's, this, that's what this was destined to do. Right. It was going to happen. Right. That's a very beefy spring on there. Exactly. You know, this, this wants to return it. So if you stick this plastic butterfly right here, and it's just one, yep. or one or two, chances are it's going to try and return it. And every time it's going to wear that plastic a little bit it's more. It's going to wear it off. And it's actually a steel shaft that runs through right. here. So it takes a lot of force to actually do that. Plus right. you have the, the, the force of the air trying to come in because their throttle mm -hmm. is open you know, that kind of thing too, right. that will add to it. We also found that when these things are starting to fail, the plastic will wear out and the butterfly valve will actually start to vibrate back and forth and it'll make noise, just like a lifter tick. Right, it's and that's the same. And that's part of the diagnostics mm -hmm. here. Is, and the moral of this whole training is to use your senses. Exactly. You know, when you're, you're looking at these things and when you're diagnosing anything. Right. So if you start hearing something that doesn't sound right, get your stethoscope on there and see, is it coming from here? Was it come from the engine? That type of thing. Right, and that, that, you know, a visual inspection also is what really led us to find the root cause of this problem. Right. You know, we had all this buildup, all this gummy junk in here that was causing it to stick, so that's caused by oil entering the intake manifold, and that can only happen a certain number of ways. That's right, you know, and uh, you know, you could have, be using the wrong oil, sure. or you could be not changing your oil frequently enough. Sure. You could be, that type of thing. You got gas in the oil, it's gonna yeah. thin it out. That type of thing. Bad rings. Yep. Uh, plugged up or blocked or non-functioning uh, PCV system. And a PCV. And PCV stands for what? Positive crankcase ventilation. And that means that they positively <laughs> want that crankcase to ventilate. Yeah. That's very important. And, you know, years ago, uh, like in the 50s, mm -hmm. they didn't have PCV systems. Okay. What they had was a downspout out the back of the engine, sure. down underneath the car, so it, the crankcase could breathe. Okay. And the fumes that it put out would go out underneath the car and fume out the guy behind you, right? Sure, okay. Uh, that type of thing. And uh, well, that's they don't have that anymore because it caused too much smog. Right. And this was the answer. Right, so what they do now is they hook up a, a valve to the crankcase, mm -hmm. run vacuum to it so that the vacuum is drawing the pressure out of the crankcase through a calibrated um, diameter, a I hole, guess, a right. calibrated hole to, uh, you know, relieve the pressure in there. But if... Uh, and then take those fumes and then burn it. Burn. That's why it's got to go to the intake, burn it in the engine. Okay. And right. that way you don't have the smog. Right. So if there's blockage in that system or a hose isn't working or the PCV valve is stuck one direction or the other, you're going to run into issues. And that's what we ran into here. If you go ahead and bring up that picture of the PCV hose, you can see that there's cracking on there and it, it, it's not cracked through though. It's not actually leaking. It wasn't leaking vacuum. Right, and that, that's common for these hoses to leak vacuum and cause lean codes, but this one is actually sucking itself completely flat. Right, and that would have been the next step here too. Mm -hmm. If it went further, it would eventually have leaked. Right, so all of a sudden you suck this hose flat, the crankcase can't breathe, it can't you know, give off its pressure. So it's going to push back into the intake. It's got to go somewhere. And yep, and I'm sure you guys are running into it, guys and gals mm -hmm. out there, where you've taken an air cleaner off, and you, and you see in the bottom, it's all full of oil. Right. That's why that happens. There's right. for some reason that crankcase is not breathing properly. Yeah, and you could end up with you know oil seals, you know, yeah, failing all kinds constantly, of stuff. that kind of right. thing. Yep, all and kinds of stuff could be happening. You know, this one pushed up past the rings and injected this manifold with all kinds of junk in there and yep. caused, a, caused a failure. Right. It really did. It did. And that's why, too, you know, <clears throat> the symptoms were after a two hour drive, sure. I ran into this problem. Right. You had to get that hot enough and make it gooey enough to create the problem. Right. Yep. So, so I guess just to, to summarize again one last time, two actuators on here, two vacuum solenoids. This actuator is going to control what Ford calls the tuning valve, and that's going to be inside of your runners right here. IMRC. IMRC. 
but the codes that you're getting set, the 2004, 2006 mm -hmm. codes on this sp uh, specific intake manifold are relating to the swirl control system. That's correct. So just keep an eye out for that and, uh, you know, really read through your service information and see if they're really telling you the truth or not. Yeah, or are they just, you know, putting only the information they have. True. You know, that kind of thing. And yep. So be careful. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got And here. use your senses. Right. You know, in this case, vision. You know, yep. and also it may be, you know, your hearing. Is sure. there something rattling around in there? Sure. Yep. Excellent. All right. Let's see what we got. So if people answering our question. We got Mike came on, said answer is C. And uh, Leland Sand also said answer is C. So that is correct. That is a correct answer. The IMRC system will help to increase power and responsiveness. And a failing system can decrease fuel economy. And we would love to send you guys out one of these coveted Wells t-shirts. Yeah. So bring up, I see Mike's email address is up, send Perfect. him an email with your shirt size and your mail-in address, and he'll get a shirt out to you real quick. All right, and then uh, we also have George here. He says the answer is also C, so George, send me out an email as well. And George, thank and, you, George. And uh, Drew came on and said, hi, Mike and Mark. Well, hi, Drew, good to see you. <laughs> hi, Drew. Um, and then we got one comment here. Um, <laughs> Ryan's coming on. He says a mechanic called with one of his customer called one of his customers after a check had bounced and yelled, "The check you sent me to pay your bill came back." And the customer replied, "Well, so did all my problems that you fixed." Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, these guys. Yeah, okay. Well, that's enough of that. Yeah, okay. Nice. <laughs> but that's exactly the message that's going on here. Right. You know, take care of the job correctly. Yeah. And. Uh, and make sure you do. Just don't, you know, uh, that's where Identifix, you get in trouble with Identifix too. Yeah. If you just go to Identifix and say, well, nine times out of 10, they replaced this. So that's what I'm going to do again right. and again. You know, stop, take a look, see what's going on and do your best to take care of your customers exactly. properly yep. the first time. Yep. All right, and so. I guess, I mean, really the only way to know that, you know, there's issues with with carboning up with oiling up inside of there is you gotta do that visual inspection. Look down in the throttle body, look inside the air cleaner. That was your indicator. As right. soon as you looked down in there, it was obvious there was something going on inside right. that wasn't right. Yep. So that's what led us to here. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Anything else you'd like I to add? I think that's it for me. That's yeah, that's it for All right. me. Alright. Well this is the point of the broadcast that I normally say Without you being there, we would not be here. And mm -hmm. you know what? I really mean that. Right. I really mean that. And I always have. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit different. Uh, first, do you know, do you know, <laughs> I'll get my tongue out of the okay. way here in a second. Do you know anyone, and I'm sure you guys do too, that can never really finish a job? They always have a project going. They always have a project going. Whether it's they get bored mm -hmm. with it, or they run out of money or whatever it is. <laughs> sure. I think the reason why that happens many times is because they're afraid of finishing it because then you are responsible for what you did. Okay. Okay. Well, it's time for me to finish this one. And uh, it's time for me to put my signature on it. August 1st, I will be retiring. Okay. This will be my last broad pack, broadcast. Thank you very much. And uh, you are left in good hands. And I would like to thank everybody in my department. Mm -hmm. These are a great bunch of guys that you can trust. Okay, and that's very important. Right. All right, and that's why Mike is here. Yep. Mike will be taking over and doing the broadcast. All right, and I'd also like to thank Wells for the opportunity to do this, to bring this information to you guys. And it was always about you guys too. Right. All right. Trying to make everybody's day better. You're right, that's the way it is. And uh, without you being in there, we would not be here. And Mike will see you next time. Yep. Peace.